Bini, due to a technical problem, the original lecture which I had recorded in class didn't have the audio and I am forced to make this video again. So I trust that you find this useful. In the lecture 32, we were having a little description of the Perth networks and how they work. In particular, uh, we, we find that Perth networks are essentially an extension of the critical path method. The critical path method has already been dealt with in lecture number 31. So here are some of the principal points which we have. Basically, we went through the solution of our CPM problem. So if you refer to your class copies, you will be able to find that. In the CPM, we have the forward pass and the backward pass. And so something that we just went through, how to get the earliest start, the late start, the early finish and late finish from that. We found that, uh, we also found that it's a tool which can be used for project managers to plan their work. One of the things that we had a little discussion about was on whether to use 0 or 1 as the start date for the project. Well, there's not that much difference between the use of 2 except for the fact that you should have a consistent way of working. Please have a look at this link where you'll be able to find all the people who are working towards becoming project management professionals, putting in their two cents or using this as a reference for the same. And also here's another link to the various clothes which we have. I trust that you find this useful. Now we go for PERT. PERT is Program Evaluation and Review Technique. And the difference between the PERT and CPM approaches are basically the CPM is highly is deterministic. We cannot we think of uh, we cannot create a CPM network without having a fair idea of what is the time which would be required for various activities. However, in part you have a, a little cushion in this aspect. We are going to be able to make it as a probabilistic thing where we say how probable it is that a work is going to start at a given time or how much probable this uh, probability is there for a delay. And all of this can be factored in to get a value of time. Otherwise, the working is just the same. And before we go, yes, CPM can reveal the time cost benefit, and you can also do the crashing. And whereas, if you look at the part network also to formulate the same, we will be looking at arrows, which are going to be activities. And then you will find that there are two kinds, uh, just as in the CPM, you have an activity on the arc or the line, and then you have activity on the node. So, we have activities, uh, we consider activities as in uninterrupted once they start. However, it's a very big policy. Any activity can get interrupted. It can get interrupted due to many reasons. It can be because of strikes, it can be because of floods, it can be because the owner has changed his priority or even the contractor has changed his priority wherein he finds that if certain other works are done, it's going to be more profitable and it will suit his cash flow. So, nodes are events in time and all activities before a node have to be completed before the next activity or before the work can flow out of the node into the next node. And there's always a single start and a single end. There should not be any loops. It's the same as what I've seen in CPM. Here are the assumptions which are unique or which make work different. We find that it's a beta distribution between the pessimistic and optimistic time. And adequately, we should represent the time required for the functioning of each activity. So although we can say that there is a probabilistic uh, way of or an approach, we still we have to have a little realism in the values of the optimistic and pessimistic times which we hope to get. And here we are looking at the distribution that equals to one sixth of the range. So it's a weighted average, four times weight is given to the, uh, to the time where we feel that it's most probably going to finish. And one way, a weight of one is given to the least, the, to the other extremities of time and this is uh, 
the probability of completing a project is uh, the same as what we used in the critical path method. So the, there is the forward pass and the back forward pass and all the other things. Oh, the only difference being that we are going to have the dates as probabilistic dates here. However, wherever we in CPM is used, we use the deterministic dates. And we have an assumption that accurate deviations are statistically independent, which is very difficult. And we also see that overall project has a normal distribution, or the Belgian distribution, which we normally talk about. And by statistically independent, we say that there is no linkage in statistical terms uh, between two activities. For instance, if you, if you look at statistics, we have a case where there is a bag with two balls where we have say for example four white balls and three black balls once we remove a ball out of the sample space the, the interaction between the two become interlinked the probability that you get a black ball is now getting increased and that of a white ball has reduced from what it was initially now this is where we have a statistical dependence between activities however whenever you are looking at any of these networks we see that they are statistically independent of each other. Again, the critical path is the one that has the longest expected value of total project value of project uh, time. So this is uh, this is again the same as what we had in the critical path method. There are some beta distribution functions. You can see that there are quite a few functions which are given here. We have to be in a position to choose the correct distribution. However, we have absolutely no way of stating which would be the best fit curve for our probabilistic probability distribution. If you were able to do it, then there's nothing like the PERT networks. We are going to find the optimistic time, the most likely time, and the pessimistic time. Optimistic time, we are very sure that everything is well and we are going to be able to do it. So this normally has a weight of one. Most likely time is the time which we say that the work is going to get completed or finished and we are going to uh, get it. This is something which we would like to have done and that's why we, we give it a weightage of 4 and this is the pessimistic time which we are very doubtful about our capability and we go. So expected time is called as a weighted average and this is the expected time optimistic plus 4 times most likely plus pessimistic by 6. You can see the weightage which we were talking about little earlier coming into the formula here and this is put on the network diagram and it will get updated as the program or the project keeps proceeding and critical path is estimated as per the usual methods we go by the formal forward pass and the backward pass or we may go in like what I like that is put as a huge table and we put in values calculate the times and fill up the values and keep going on. This is what the computer actually does. Now it's based on expected time rather than the deterministic time which we were having in CPM. So here's the variation, variance for activity completion. And yeah. We get the following information from product analysis we find that expected project completion time probability of a completion between before a specified date and critical path activities that directly impact completion time are also known activities that have slack time uh, lend resource uh, lend, uh, lend to the reduction of the stress on the critical path however we should be very careful that non-critical paths are not made critical because focus has been shifted from them we are actually start and end dates. This is a data which we can get from our PERT analysis. PERT also allows for flexible scheduling. The limitation of PERT are that it is the subject uh, is still is highly subjective. The error of judgment of a person will reflect very badly on the project. The, pro the experience of a person might have been very good in similar projects and times might have been given in a very optimistic manner. Uh, or the other thing might have the vice versa may also be true. This is why we find that all the individual might not have sufficient information or experience in scheduling that particular type of project. So in all of these 
anything can go wrong so it's highly prone to the individual's judgment and the ju- distribution may not be a beta distribution at all we showed so many curves and we thought that they are beta distribution however there's a very good chance that it's not a beta distribution at all and assumption of project completion time is same as what we have on the critical path may not be always to be true because a non critical uh, path can be made critical because of lack of focus on the uh, on the way the project has, is going on so here here are some of the references which have been used in the project in this presentation trust you found this presentation useful and all the best